Ten years ago, a violent uprising began. Since then, it's shaken the northeast of Nigeria and neighboring countries. It's a conflict that's killed more than 30,000 people and displaced millions more. I'm talking, of course, of Boko Haram. But who are Boko Haram? And why has Nigeria's battle with them lasted over a decade? So how did it all begin? Boko Haram means Western education is forbidden. It was formed by this man, Mohamed Yusuf. He hated the West and was very critical of the government, which he saw as corrupt and un-Islamic. He set up a religious complex, including a mosque and an Islamic school in Maiduguri, the capital of Borno State. He was a charismatic speaker whose followers were a mixed bag, not only some of society's poorest, but also upper class and university students who invited him to speak on campus. They accepted the ideology, they accepted the belief, the belief of establishing a theocratic Islamic state. And all the people who joined him, they, even though Mohammed was, was attending to their needs, he was providing some social services to them, the core reason why most of them joined is the ideology. In July 2009, Boko Haram staged a failed uprising against the Nigerian government. 800 people were killed and many of their members arrested. Authorities thought they'd successfully crushed the group when Mohamed Yusuf was killed in police custody. But that July uprising marked the beginning of a 10-year-long battle that continues till this day. Just a year after the uprising, one of Yusuf's lieutenants, Abubakar Shikau, announced he was now the new leader of Boko Haram. The re-emergence of Boko Haram under Shikau's leadership marked one of the first times when authorities claimed to have defeated Boko Haram only for the group to resurface. It's a pattern that would be repeated time and again over the next decade. In August 2011, Boko Haram made international headlines when it sent a car bomb into the United Nations compound in Abuja. 23 people were killed and more than 75 injured. The next few years would be some of the group's deadliest. Between 2013 and 2015, Boko Haram killed more than 11,000 people. It was impossible to count the number of dead bodies. There were so many women, men and children. During that period, the group seized more and more territory and by 2015 was in control of much of Nigeria's Borno state. It also spread its attacks beyond Nigeria's borders to neighboring Niger, Chad and Cameroon. As people fled the terror, the UN estimates that over 2.2 million people were displaced. But Boko Haram's most notorious attacks were when they targeted schoolgirls. One night in April of 2014, students of the girls' secondary school of the northern town of Chibok were sleeping in their dormitories. But armed members of Boko Haram stormed the boarding school. They bundled 276 terrified schoolgirls together and took them away. The abduction led to global outrage. Prominent global figures asked for more to be done to free the girls. Over a hundred students are kidnapped by Kidnap of the Chibok Boko Haram girls have received international plan and to stand with Nigeria. The Nigerian government should have shared it. They don't really understand this But although a number of them have been released in the last five years, more than a hundred of the students are still missing. The Chibok incident showed Boko Haram kidnappings could bring them publicity. Four years after Chibok, they abducted 110 schoolgirls from the town of Dapshi. Most were released a month later. But one of them, a Christian student called Leah Sharibu, remains in captivity. Her peers say she refused to give up her faith. Since 2013, more than a thousand children have been abducted by the terror group. The Nigerian military have been criticized for their failure to free those kidnapped by Boko Haram. Low morale and corruption have left the army floundering. But Boko Haram's shifting strategy, including the use of female suicide bombers, has made them hard to pin down. In recent years, Boko Haram has fractured and split, forging new alliances and developing new tactics. In 2015, Boko Haram lost its self-proclaimed capital, Gwoza, to Nigerian troops. Over time, the government has taken back territory, forcing the group towards the hilly areas east of Goza, as well as Lake Chad and the Sambisa Forest. 
Whilst losing territory, Abu Bakr Shekau looked for new international allies. He pledged allegiance to the so-called Islamic State. But Ayas had other ideas. A year later, it announced that the new leader of what was now known as the Islamic State West Africa province was Abu Musab al-Banawi. Remember this guy, Mohammed Yusuf, the founder of Boko Haram? Well, al-Banawi is believed to be his son. Although he keeps a low profile, there are no verified images of him. So Boko Haram was now split. Abu Bakr Shekau remained in control of another faction, now known as Jamahatu Ahalu Sune Lil Dawa Wal Jihad, or JAS, to you and me. The Islamic State West Africa province, also known as ISWAP, has developed new tactics, focusing on winning the hearts and minds of the communities the territory it controls. Isop tactic now is actually in, is a combination of not just uh, uh, warfare, but it's also a combination combination of uh, of a state building project. So Isop is actually engaging in that state build, build, building project, having their own judicial system where they where they establish uh, uh, court judgments, also monitoring like uh, uh, economic activities, especially the fish farming, the cattle rearing, and the farming activity in the region. Now all of these activities were not uh, the activities that we saw from. Bokaram at the, at the early and the, and the nascent stage. As Isis caliphate is lost in the Middle East, ISWAP is attempting to establish one in West Africa. If it's successful, this insurgency could be around for another decade.